Kia ora and welcome to another episode of Influencers at LU, uh, a video podcast brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce with me, your host Hafsa. Today our topic is demystifying sustainability and my guest today is Wim De Conning. Wim is the course director of the graduate program Business and Sustainability at Lincoln University. He has been involved in many global industry projects where he was able to create sustainable added value before he joined Lincoln University as a professional teaching fellow and is currently the director of B-Link Innovation. Wim is the joint initiator of the Lincoln University Energy Demonstration Farm. Welcome, Wim. Thank you very much, Hafsa. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining me today. So, Wim, why are you interested in sustainability? Uh, Hafsa, let me say that you have given me a, a huge task to dis- demystify sustainability. I'm not able if I, I don't think if I'm able to do that in 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot, uh, so, so to say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> To me, sustainability allows us to, to, to create value, um, uh, especially if we can address uh, business issues from a, holistic, from a holistic point of view. Um, I think by actually, um, uh, if we can actually stimulate the stakeholders to um, uh, uh, be engaged in that process so they, they can address opportunities and challenges in the way in, in a holistic in a holistic manner, in which they can actually see these challenges and or the opportunities and basically ad- address the three dimensions: uh, people, planet, profit. Um, I think that would be really really good, because in my opinion, these three people, planet, profit always interact with each other. So there is a risk <clears throat> if we would make it one dimensional um, that it always would come at a cost to the other two. So if I would only focus on profit or only focus on environment, then it, then in my opinion, it always comes at a cost to the, to, to the other. So why do I like sustainability? I think for me, it is a it is cool to be involved in a challenge to, to create a, a, a world that can sustain a, a future generations. Mm. Which, which is very... Um... Which, which is an ongoing discussion, isn't it? With, with a lot happening in the world at this point in time. So uh, because you've talked so much about the, uh, the, the three Ps and the idea that you, know, you want to keep the stakeholders engaged in this whole discussion. So what is sustainability really, Wim? Oh man, you continue asking difficult questions. Um, if you would have asked me an easy one, say Wim, what is the definition of one kilo, uh, one kilogram, I could, I could tell you that. And the cool thing about that is that there will be no discussion globally because we all agreed that one one kilogram, what that that entails. So it doesn't matter what culture or where you are on this global world. If you define something as being a kilogram, everybody knows what what you talk about. But if you look at um, sustainability, Sustainability doesn't benefit from that fixed definition. So it's basically open for interpretation. And when I talk to the students and we, we, I, I can sometimes pull it completely out of context and basically saying, well, hey, listen, I'm using recycled, uh, recycled toilet paper. Does that make me sustainable? Um, and of course, th- Nothing tells me that I'm not sustainable, but of course it is way larger than only using recycled paper. Um, so th- I think the, the sustainability development goals from the UN is helping us to, uh, to address the issues that should be considered for, for a sustainable world. And to me, sustainability, and this is my interpretation of that, is make sure that Sustainability will be an, is basically the, um, uh, the ability for businesses to address um, uh, all these uh, issues in a holistic manner. So again, looking looking at it from from all from all angles. And so, if we can actually do that, it it, it requires the business model to be more agile, and therefore, it will be able to cope with change better. Mm, yeah, and. 
and I and I and I note that you know, and mm -hmm. I really like that that it's very larger than using recycled paper. But we, that could be a good start using recycled paper, but sustainability is much larger than that. Absolutely, and I fully agree. And and of yeah. course, what what I do is by singling out recycled paper and calling that sustainability, I'm basically polarizing. Mm, yeah. And and. And I think, yeah, that is that is something we should not do when we talk about sustainability. Yeah, great. So the next question obviously goes into uh, the discussion that how do future conversations need to happen around sustainability? So, oh, um, if I think you asked difficult questions this morning. Um, I think if you look at industry, I think industry has already some, or at least some industry have already uh, taken the lead on this. If you would, for example, look at Unilever, um, uh, they um, said in 2010, so that is now 10 years ago, that in 2020, 100% of their, ac their agricultural raw materials will be sustainable. And at that moment in time, the question within Unilever was, okay, what is sustainability? And again, it, it progressed from that. Mm. Uh, did they reach 100%? No, they did not. Did they make a huge change mm. in, in sustainable value chains and sustainable, like, like uh, 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 sustainable business models? Absolutely. And mm. I think on the back of that, what you now see also, if you look at, at New Zealand, um, a company like Kathmandu, uh, but also Sinle in, in our industry, they're all B Corp certified. So these companies are actually showing that you can be holistic in your approach to, 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 be, to be successful, but not, not being one, one, one dimensional. So what do I mean with one dimensional? And I think it will be really difficult if I say, well, if I link my environmental concerns for nature or biodiversity or whatever, if I link that with a, a, a stereotype called a tree hugger, at that moment in time, I have polarized and it will be so difficult to get the discussion out of this polarized uh, 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 status that I put it in just because, just because I stereotyped somebody that is concerned about the environment as a tree hugger, basically that stops uh, uh, us or uh, that stops us of allowing us to be holistic and therefore solving the whole the whole issue. So mm -hmm. I think I think I think one of the things that I do uh, with the students, but also with the work that I do with 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 with, with, with companies, is really try to prevent um, uh, polarization to make sure that all the issues are being looked at from a holistic point of view. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think there's some very important points in here that, that you've spoken of in terms of the polarization, which is obviously not something that that would help us in getting the uh, getting forward, because if we start to polarize, then we're starting to create some divisions, which is which is which is very interesting because that's not the way forward, obviously. No, no, correct, because I think the way forward is collaboration. So we need to do yeah. this together. And yeah. if we need, if we're going to do this together, we basically need to be able to understand each other and creating stereotypes and or polarizing is not helping that process. Yeah. And I realize that it's sometimes it's really, really hard to uh, 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 to not do that, especially when you are uh, you at a personal or, or um, from a business point of view, you're in a predicament that you are facing a certain issue that... Uh, there are emotions involved and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but mm -hmm. I think I think looking at a, at 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 the larger scale, yeah, we need to make sure that we we do this in collaboration. Or we do this together. Yeah. So coming to doing it together in terms of collaboration to drive sustainability, I know you play a, a role in the Aotearoa SDG Summit, as um, uh, in in terms of being a part of Lincoln's representative. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. And and of course, I see myself and, 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 and my colleagues, and it's not me that is doing this. I think it's the whole Lincoln University community that basically teamed up with um, uh, University of Canterbury and uh, uh, the ARA Institute. Mm. And basically what we're trying to do, we're trying to find out 
how the SDGs will actually help us to, to, to create a better world. And with that, we need to basically take action and see and then try to understand what the SDGs actually are and, 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 and what, how they can actually help us. So basically, by doing that, um, uh, the, 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 um, this Lincoln University, uh, University of Canterbury and ARA basically developed um, uh, um, uh, this summit in which we have three online sessions in which we will actually take the participants on a journey from basically the sea to the summit. Mm -hmm. um, the first one has uh, already passed. That was that was um, uh, um, uh, 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 that has already passed, where we basically looked at see the change. So we basically um, had a nice variety of, uh, of of speakers, basically seeing the change when it uh, when it when it when it uh, comes to to the SDGs and sustainability. The mm -hmm. second one will be the change, and that is still to come. So please. Um, uh, um, be aware of all the channels and 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 and, and please uh, join us for that and the third online uh, workshop will be actually working together to 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 be that change for that change and that's where of course my collaboration comes back in mm -hmm. and then the summit which will be in september 2021 um we are already actually going to look at um uh, the collaboration for for real ch for, for real change and that will be a quite a nice large face-to-face -face event if of course COVID, uh, COVID allows allows that so uh, yeah very proud that lincoln university is has teamed up with uh, with, with our colleagues uh, in the educational sector here in uh, canterbury mm. so yeah collaboration is the key absolutely Absolutely. Mm, yeah. So thank you very much, Wim, for these insights into sustainability. I know you did say at the beginning you weren't going to demystify it. So maybe we didn't demystify it. So. No, I don't think we demystified it because um, it, it is still very much open for for your own in, interpretation and your own actions in that. And I think that that is really good because mm. that basically means you start to talk about this. And to me, the biggest compliment that we can get as lecturers here at Lincoln University when we address large topics like sustainability is basically uh, uh, engage the minds of our students so that when they come home and sit at the kitchen table uh, or at a bar or whatever and start to talk to their families or their mates about these things, I think that's where the real change is. And that's, I think, what we'll be uh, uh, promoting and stimulating here at Lincoln University. Mm, excellent. It's always better when we start at grassroots levels, isn't it? Yeah. So thank you once again, Wim. And if uh, if our listeners want to connect with Wim, uh, you can find him on LinkedIn. And you can also find him on Lincoln University staff profile. So you can get his details there. And as for me, this is the last episode of the podcast for this year. We will be back in 2021 with another new series and a new season of this podcast and until then stay well and take care everyone bye bye